Welcome back to another episode of Tariko Unveiled. Today's episode is very special and took a whole metric crap ton of research. But today, we're going to scale and determine how powerful is Gourmet Heavenly King, Tariko. Briefly, running through Tariko's life, he was set adrift along with Starjuin's infants to later be born, at some point was found by President Nichiru and raised to manhood. We know from this channel's videos, check those out if you haven't, Tariko along with his twin brother Starjuin are actually the children of the gourmet god Akashia and god Chef Froze. Along with his adoptive siblings, Tariko has throughout his life encountered and experienced a great deal of combat and strange phenomenon on their planet. As one of the four heavenly kings, Tariko is nicknamed the glutton for his abnormally large appetite. Basically, a food serving for 500 people would only get Tariko about a tenth of the way full. With his skills having allowed him to discover roughly 2% of the approximately 300,000 varieties of known ingredients in the Tariko world, he's basically introduced around 6,000 different varieties. In order to determine how powerful Tariko is, we'll be scaling throughout his journey starting at the very beginning with his fated meeting with Chef Komatsu. Born in this instance from Chef and Hunter, we see the ultimate combo, but I think you and the like button would be a better combo. First, we need to examine what are gourmet cells. Gourmet cells are cells with regenerative and strength enhancing qualities passed down from ancient spirits and or food spirits that allow the user to evolve when they consume delicious foods. An example being the meteor garlic, which has enough nutrients to sustain a normal human being like Kamatsu for days and leave him more jacked than Tariko. Cells can also evolve as a response to harsh new environments, instantly creating adaptations which allow the user to survive and can also initiate other self-defense mechanisms for the body. Gourmet cells are, in short, the reason all Tariko characters can and will reach hacks levels of feats and abilities. In this same tune, due to the gourmet cells' insatiable hunger, Tariko's calorie intake and consumption is absurdly high. And I'm not talking like just Goku or Luffy levels. As of pretty much the entire series, Tariko can liberally use techniques that cost millions of calories. And I'm keep track of that number millions. Thanks to food immersion mastery and considering obviously other things like food honor, he's already attained a level of mastery in his calorie intake and outtake that your average human being can't even compare to. Considering the average body weight in America is 171 pounds and accounting for the various elements and components that make up the human body like iron, proteins, fats, calcium, and etc. The average human body is roughly between 155,816 and 125,822 calories, meaning to even launch his most rudimentary attacks like the fort, Tariko's calorie consumption would instantly kill your average human, almost over a dozen times. Now upon meeting Kamatsu, we see Tariko directly at the start of the series being small to mid building level as he easily uses a fishing pole made from a 76 millimeter iron bar with elevator wire wrapped around it that had a maximum strength of 40 tons and Tariko claims he wouldn't have had much trouble hooking a small well, but in this same encounter, he uses this to hook a crawdad fish, which weighed in at four tons, and a five-tailed eagle that attempted to steal his crawdad fish, which weighed in at 1.5 tons, and he brings down both of them with a single swing of the fishing pole. He was easily swinging five tons with ease on the first chapter, and scaling this to real-world creatures, Tariko can easily ragdoll an adult African elephant. Also mentioning briefly that Tariko proceeds to cut this fishing pole in half, which is nearly impossible when it comes to just simply cutting iron, and Tariko did it with laser precision. And this is far from the first or last time Tariko outright devastates creatures that weigh several tons. Going on in the Garara Gator art, Tariko not only has enough time during the gator's attack to say a prayer of thanks and attack, which was likely faster than anything on our natural planet, he then uses the fork to effortlessly impale and lift the 13-ton creature off the ground cleanly and then decapitate it. Early game, Tariko showcases his strength several times before even seeing serious enemies start to appear. After the Garar Gator arc, Tariko goes on to fight the Troll Kongs, destroying the several meter reinforced concrete wall guarding the biotype with relative ease. The Troll Kongs are creatures with capture levels high enough that guns, rocket launchers, and even tanks had no effect on them and Tariko could have easily killed dozens of them if they had actually been tasty, but he easily subdued even their leader, which would be comparable to a large battalion of soldiers outfitted with missiles, artillery, and, you know, high command support in destructive terms. Tariko in this encounter showed by pounding his chest he could make a sound louder than thunder, 
thunder clocking in at 120 decibels, with whisper being around 30 decibels. A normal tone conversation is about 60 decibels, and a motorcycle is about 95 decibels when it's, you know, flaring its engine. This all meaning that Tariko could cause immediate hearing damage to your average human being by simply pounding his chest. Now imagine what someone like Zebra could do. With his early story abilities already putting him around the level of some of the most powerful characters in anime with mid-level destructive abilities, I'd rank Tariko as already large building to small city level. And he easily surpasses characters in shows like Hunter x Hunter, Full Metal Alchemist, and honestly, would already be a top contender in most of the other anime worlds. To put it into perspective, if you've seen Dragon Ball Z when Raditz came to Earth, I rank Tariko as several times stronger than Raditz, realistically being stronger than Goku up until the end of the Saiyan arc as Vegeta and Goku were planet warping to destroying level. I say warping because I question if they actually could have blown up the planet in, like, in one quick go, but that's another video. For the next part of this video, I thought I'd explain to Rico's not direct power per se, but his potential in varied situations and durability outside of combat. Due to the constant level ups he receives from eating Willy Wonka level food, Tariko attains a large variety of environmental and bodily adaptions. Moving forward, we see him grow exponentially. In the Puffer Whale Caves, Tariko first shows off his mirror neurons. Mirror neurons are brain cells that react both when a particular action is performed and when it is only observed. In this fashion, Tariko can learn, adapt, and often improvise new techniques and abilities, starting with the human world. In the Troll Kong's habitat, Tariko was attacked by several pit viper-like snakes, each said to be able to kill a grown man with his bite. And we find not only does he have inborn poison antidotes that can neutralize the venom of the toxic snakes, he also has over 70 other antidotes in his body. Again, in the Puffer Will case, we learn Tariko can see in almost virtually pitch black environments, navigating by smell alone and can hold his breath for long periods underwater. While on the ice continent, Ice Hill, Tariko shows the ability of shivering, where he can vibrate his muscles relieving shock waves of heat, stave off temperatures as cold as negative 80 below, and even melt thick ice off his body within seconds. Also in Ice Hill with his battle with sous chef Tommy Rod, we see in order to counter Tommy Rod's horde of insects, he can produce an essential oil known as Phytoncide that can repel even the onslaught of Tommy's insects. And another one of Tariko's grueling ordeals in the human world was his time in Heavy Hole. Heavy Hole is an environment that has gravity higher than the average space, due to its location closer and closer to the Earth's core. The deeper one goes into Heavy Hole, the harder it is to move as the force of gravity fights against the user's cells. This provides a case of gravity training like Dragon Ball Z characters undergo in the Capsule Corp spaceship. Tariko has to not only learn to counter gravity, but also make the strain on his body lesser as he engages in combat with be specialized for these environments. In order to overcome Heavy Hole, Tariko's gourmet cells vibrated against each other to generate a large amount of energy similar to static electricity, similar to a magnetic charge of a high gravity environment. What could normally be a negative charge they held in Tariko's body is slowly changed to a positive charge. This results in a positive charge standing against a positive charge, which increases the repulsive force in his cells, making the effects of high gravity less pronounced. This, of course, however, consumes a high amount of calories. In the BB corn arc, we confirm Tariko can withstand heats of 12,000 degrees as he sits on top of volcanic rocks to, you know, cook his popcorn. By the gourmet cooking arc, we know Stargewind's fire is hotter than 2,500 degrees. In the ozone arc, Tariko learns how to regulate his breathing in order not to expel carbon dioxide. This breathing method revolutionizes how Tariko expends and holds energy. By preserving as much oxygen as possible in his lungs, Tariko's gourmet cells significantly lower the total amount of oxygen needed to function, as well as lowering the total amount of oxygen expelled with each breath, thus stabilizing the blood oxygen levels in his arteries, thus resulting in higher energy levels brought from a comparatively smaller amount of oxygen, and this results in high efficiency breathing. Exhalation is also stopped, which contains body heat, moisture, and oxygen, and even allows Tariko to completely eliminate the exhaling of carbon dioxide. Also in the ozone herb arc, Tariko collected the lightning phoenix's feather, and we see that Tariko can react to a literal lightning bolt, and this was before the gourmet world. Lightning which travels at 270,000 miles per hour, casually about 186,000 miles per second. Does that sound familiar? Oh yeah, that's because that's the cell division speed needed to access the back channel. In the bubble fruit arc, Tariko underwent various food immersion and food honor training to the point of achieving what I call nirvana, in order to witness and take part in the bubble fruit itself. 
mastering food honor and immersion no longer waste energy on attacks he learned this advanced art that takes a lifetime in days showing Tariko has immense mental fortitude and willpower something already needed to not fall to the enemy genjutsu like intimidation and in the four beast art we see Tariko fight the lion like four beast gal with a capture level of 127 which withstood humanity's greatest conjoined weapons and was handing out megaton bomb level paw swipes Tariko dispatches the lion gal easily showing a power pretty much on a small continent or country level considering the comparison to the entire conjoined force of humanity's greatest weapons from these examples i'd rank human world to Rico at the same or around the same level if not slightly stronger than late game naruto or one piece characters with abilities that border on the strongest available comparisons like logia type devil fruit users or keke genkai wielders Tariko's versatility and adaptation factor cannot be understated. He can invent new techniques in the flow of heavy combat and adapt and copy techniques he sees at a faster and faster rate throughout the series. This comes up again when he copied Sunny's intuition, an ability that allows the user to narrow down the best and least straining possible action in a situation and pinpoint the specific weaknesses on an opponent without thinking. This furthering his evolution as he invented the double arm 50 Rin Kuji punch that could avert the force of a waterfall that was moving fast enough to shred mountain sized creatures and pieces of earth in its path. In terms of damage, Tariko has a healing factor already stronger than most anime characters from losing chunks of flesh, being burned at high temperatures and constantly regenerating his skin, bombs, and to having holes stabbed in him, Tariko can overcome most injuries outside of direct dismemberment, taking blows that easily shatter landscapes. With a togafi, which by the end he doesn't even need anymore, he could heal broken necks or internal body injuries as well. Tariko can exist in environments that unless specialized for you, die in. This extending to surreal and harsh environments of the gourmet world as well, and it's even stated that Tariko only needs an hour of sleep every two weeks, and his sense of smell is so acute, it can provide accurate information on years of different scents and even dead spirits. Moving on in terms of strength, Tariko has been tossing multi turn creatures and shattering mountains since basically the start of the series. We'll be talking about in story Tariko from here on out, as all the adaptations and abilities I've mentioned so far are near obsolete in the gourmet world, as any faux environment or adaptation made in the human world is not only carried over but scaled to even higher levels. Tariko continues to scale to not only the other four heavenly kings, each of whom in their own right are kind of planet busters, but each opponent he's faced. Here we get true examples of how powerful Tariko truly is. When first entering the gourmet world, the group encounter an illusion using monster that Tariko not only overpowers but puts under illusion with intimidation and kills from shock again showing his non-combat prowess and this was a creature with a capture level of 600 which puts it at nearly six times stronger than the four beasts that assaulted the human world while in the domain of the horse king heracles to halt its brood's charge Tariko delivered a massive series of fuji punches to the ground that spread earthquakes and destruction dozens of miles around them possibly hundreds if you consider the size of horse king heracles and his territory in this encounter we also learned Tariko could survive in a vacuum as when the horse king inhaled and a absorbed all the oxygen in the area, Tariko didn't die and stood defiant. Once awakening his gourmet demon, we see Tariko's red demon jet fork reach space, meaning this attack clocks in at over 10,000 miles per hour. Tariko again battles one of the eight kings in a bout of games with the monkey king, where he effectively beat a god in armor. To even be able to stand before the Monkey King, Tariko and the group had to master Embu and command all 60 trillion cells in their body to move in coordination and act as one. The Monkey King casually does this like second nature and is a being that casually skips mountains across the planet, can jump into space and crack continents. But speaking of cells, I'll take a second to go back and talk about Tariko's gourmet cells and by extension his gourmet cell demons, though they're kind of hard to scale. Tariko's blue cell demon came to blows with the horse king Heracles. After Rico got one shotted, not only delivering a punch to it, but also launching several attacks that the horse king had to counter against. Tariko's red and blue demons are shrouded in mystery. The white demon being even more mysterious as we get zero mention or detail about the white universe outside of it being a counter to the black universe, which is kind of sus. We see red and blue come out of Tariko's body and battle the gourmet nobles, though I don't feel they were fully resurrected because they definitely should be capable of beating the Nitro, though thinking about it, the blue Nitro all were capable of scaling on a battlefield with Jiro and the Eight Kings. All of Tariko's red demon enhanced attacks either scarred the planet or broke out into space. This should be a reminder that once in the gourmet world, many Tariko characters were planet destroying level. 
And while Tariko can't manifest white for long, white one-shotted Neo, who tanked a small star's detonation. The demons themselves in their true awakened states all would be comparable to galactic level fighters, as it stated nearly all the appetite spirits once roamed the universe killing off other appetites and destroying countless planets. We have seen Tariko stand toe to toe with Akasha, and throughout the last few videos, I've stated that this battle as many others in story Tariko happened at light speed or beyond light speed level, as users like Stardewin are almost using future sites to predict what will happen next in battle. The level of devastation in this battle was solar system to perhaps large star level, with Akasha being able to easily destroy the planet with a flick of his hand. Like, no understatement. Imagine looking into the sky and you see a fist of divine energy the size of Jupiter. Akashi's attacks would throw off the orbit of a planet well before destroying it. Akashi in his awoken form was several times stronger than God and even the eight kings. God's putting it simply ate the fucking moon on his first showing, a feat that required more energy output than the planet's own gravitational energy. And the eight kings were all easily capable of planet devastating to possibly solar system devastating level capabilities like piercing, destroying, or leveling the planet in his landscapes. Neo and Akashia by extension withstood and neutralized the small star's detonation from Don Slime. Now while the star was small, we will have to at least acknowledge that it was incredibly condensed. So for scale, we'll compare the compressed star at white dwarf level. A white dwarf explosion is estimated at 327,000 degrees, making it 60-ish times hotter than our own sun. Akasha also awakened and escaped the Well King's moon's stomach, which is said to be a boundless black hole connected to the spirit world, meaning Akasha once again displays faster than light level speed. Going further, Akasha also escaped a back channel with a time acceleration of hundreds of thousands of years while fighting beasts with eight king level capture levels. So I'm gonna already compare this to the hyperbolic time chamber splitting feat that Majin Buu did, so literally he can rip through universes. Now, Tariko punched the same Akasha across the Jupiter-sized planet and caught him directly afterwards, this happening faster than 26,000 miles per hour. Meaning we have to upscale to the size of Jupiter as it's more comparable to the Tariko Earth and the speed of Tariko's attached. Jupiter has a diameter of about 44,000 kilometers, that's 88,695 miles, and that's over a third larger than Earth. This will also confirm that the initial gravity on Tariko's planet would be higher as Jupiter being the comparison has a higher gravity. For example, if you weighed 100 pounds on Earth, on Jupiter you'd weigh roughly two and a quarter times as much, so about 240 pounds. This would likely have multiplied by the conditions of the gourmet world and the battle they had at hand. So, scaling the diameter of this planet, I say Tariko hit Akasha with a speed and force relative to a shooting star, aka a meteor. And for context, a meteor moves with about 94,000 miles of kinetic energy. My math may be off and that's why I always say about or estimating, but this is backed up by earlier scans stating that the unsealed Monkey King struck with the force of meteors when fighting the fragment of Neo. For his attacks to launch a awoken Akashia, Tariko had to be hitting harder than the Monkey King, harder than Midoriya, and each of them could cause continental sized explosions. I'm certain that the attacks delivered in this battle alone were easily planetary scale, as Akashia also left a trail of destruction as he flew across the planet, and Tariko could basically perfectly sink his body with Ogre at the time, thus allowing the full power of Ogre to be released. And like all the other gourmet cell demons, Ogre's backstory easily just says he was basically the strongest and was not to be trifled with. With access to things like food luck, his own technique set, and the back channel, in game Tariko is more than a match for any anime character that's not simply, you know, omnipotent. He has resistances to poisons, pheromones, airborne or biological pathogens, illusions, heat, cold, intense gravity, oxygen deprivation, and countless other adaptations. With near instant speed regeneration, Tariko's body can withstand light speed attacks that hit like meteors or nuclear bombs or stars. These coming from beings like the Eight Kings or Akasha himself, with very few other characters being able to scale to this. He can react to light speed level attacks and lightning, and attacks that even have reality warping effects, cause illusions, and tricks of the minds as powerful as mental techniques in any other fiction. Tariko's attack power and range is already planetary level, and he can sense minor disturbances or threats like the Eight Kings on a planetary wide scale, along with his own devil sense that allows him to basically call in the entire Earth at once for sense. 
and in the end of Toriko, with Starju and Akashia Joey and several other heavy hitters dying and Midoriya giving his life to restore the planet, Toriko is easily the strongest being on the entire planet. Now stronger than Akashia or Midoriya ever was and with his awakened appetite, Toriko set off to the stars. Now, to sum it all up, Toriko has resistances to attacks launched at any of the five senses and even the sixth sense like detection and intuition on opponents he's never encountered. Toriko is at least large planet to mid-sized star level, and due to the hacks effects of the Toriko world like Minority World, Food Luck, or Honor, Toriko can ignore some of the harshest scenarios. This leads me to say that Toriko rivals characters of extreme power from other worlds of fiction, like Any Form Goku, Superman, Six Paths Naruto, Nika Nika Awaken Luffy, or any form of Ichigo, you name it. I truly think Toriko and other characters from his universe rival if not dwarf the power level of most of the shonen anime. But you guys let me know. Am I exaggerating? Did I get the numbers wrong? Could Toriko's universe easily be defeated by Goku or One Punch Man? I'm not gonna lie, One Punch Man would probably do it. But has this series just not been given the proper time to shine? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for waiting and watching another episode of The Unveiled. It's been a pleasure as always. And of course, we give thanks for the bounty that nature and the universe has provided us. Welcome back everyone to another episode of Toriko Unveiled. Before the year closes out, we're gonna deliver some presents per you guys' request as Toriko won the last poll. So today, we're gonna talk about sound users in anime. Now, amongst anime, we have a few different comparisons. We have the Sound Ninja from Naruto, able to use sound like amplifiers, also in battle, and there's a popular showcase of this when Shoji fought the Sound Ninja Dozu. There's Inumaki, the cursed speech user from Jujutsu Kaisen, whose words can rip apart, explode, and overall decimate his foes, and there's Bonala from Hunter x Hunter, who possesses a body like a natural instrument and dances and can debilitate people with the sounds. Sound is defined as vibrations that travel through the air or another medium, and can be heard when they reach a person or animal's ear. Sound can travel through air, water, earth, realistically any medium, not space. As the age old moniker goes, no one can hear you scream in space. Now amongst these people who will sound, they all utilize it like an extension of themselves. Today, we're gonna sound the trumpets of war and usher in anime's strongest sound user, the walking environmental disaster that is Zebra. A man known as a walking calamity. Ranked as the most destructively powerful of the four heavenly kings, Zebra's very presence is comparable to the actual phenomenon. Being single-handedly responsible for the extinction of over a dozen species that pissed him off, this incidentally led Zebra to find himself in prison in the Honeycomb Jail, the Toriko world's direct reference to the Rings of Hell. After a few years in prison, Zebra later got released on the orders of his father, the ego president of Shiryu. This news of Zebra's release shakes the literal world more than any natural disasters. Countries ceased wars in order to prepare for Zebra. His release causes the stock market to plummet and crash and puts 25 separate nations into a state of emergency. And the worldwide economic loss by him simply being released from prison was predicted to be enough to wipe out 10 nations. Now, why is Zebra considered so dangerous? So much a threat that entire countries settled their differences in face of potential threats from him. The answer to that question is Zebra is a sound user, but as today's video is titled, he is anime's strongest sound user, whereas the other examples that I provided earlier could be seen as using sound as an extension of themselves or their combat abilities, Zebra could be seen as sound incarnate, starting with simply his hearing ability. First off, Zebra knows if you're lying, whether through bodily functions and hearing the fluctuation in one's tone similar to Ta from Avatar, but Zebra hearing goes so much further. It's been said that he can hear a coin drop from dozens of miles away, a pin dropping during a sandstorm. He can hear through walls, earth, air resistance, and project his own voice just as far, shown when he sent to Rico a voice message miles away at the entrance of Honey Prison. Upon his release from prison, however, Zebra proceeded to hunt down and kill every single prisoner that had spoke bad about him behind closed doors. The number of how many people he murdered isn't known, but I'm gonna assume probably wasn't a lot that were willing to talk about him behind his back. Because the entire time Zebra was in prison, which was a span of over three years, he underwent and survived perhaps hundreds of different executions, and during this time devoured every beast sent to execute. Honey Prison's beasts are all capture level 45 and higher ranking, making each one a city level threat, and Zebra killed and ate these creatures as training for years. And now we're gonna get into the part of the video I know everyone's here for, and that's Zebra's rap sheet. 
Before leaving Honey Prison, he cleared out the surrounding monster inhabited forest during its most dangerous time of year. The beasts below Honey Prison were massive, scaling from capture level 50 to the low 80s, putting each one around mountain level in comparison to beasts like Regal, Mammoth, Hellboros, or etc. Zebra wiped out every single one of these beasts within seconds and even killed the ruler of the forest with a blast that seemingly caused an explosion the size of a nuke. Zebra fights using sound both as projectiles and enhancing his own physical capability. But I say this to point out that Zebra's abilities are applicable to nearly any form of delivery. He can launch blasts of sound in several different modes, from the sound bullet which can deliver messages from miles away as if Zebra was right next to you, Howl Bullet being the long range intimidation version of Sound Bullet, Echo Map, which allowed Zebra to map out everything in an over 70 kilometer radius like a radar beacon, extending both above and below ground and of course working like sonar when in water. Sound Bazooka, the area of effect like shout he used to kill all four execution beasts and destroy the room he was held in, and quick note on Sound Bazooka, it can hit every single inch of a target's body, shown in Zebra's preparing of the Salamander Sphinx. Machine Gun Voice, that rapid fires his sound bullets like well, a machine gun, voice missile, which is one of the favorites, comes in the form of a blast of sound from Zebra's mouth that honestly is extremely reminiscent to how Saiyans in Dragon Ball Z are known for their energy roars. Thunder Noise, which I personally love because he upgrades it to Meteor Noise and later a voice Meteor Shower, but with this move, Zebra launches a massive sphere of sound and has the vibrations reverberate off of each other, amplify and strike back down like bolts of God's lightning and later literal meteor showers. Voice Cutter, which hones sound into fine blades that can cut anything into ribbons. This showcase when Zebra's attack actually had an effect on God, the literal primordial deity of Tariko. He can also form physical projections of his sound like armor, which he ironically isn't seen casting on himself very often. Walls he can use to lock down opponents, massive barriers like when he protected the crowd during the Gourmet Festival. His voice also seemingly can move things, as also during the Gourmet Festival Zebra evacuated the entire crowd from the stadium before laying vicious hands on the Nitro, but we gotta stop and examine this for a second. This stadium was so massive that there were skyscrapers built inside of it. This stadium had 100 million people in it, that's a third of America, that's the entire population of Egypt. Zebra moved an amount of people equal to the lower top 15 countries on earth. In this action, he had to evacuate every single person in the stadium to a safe range all with the power of his voice and sound control, and did so in a time no longer than half an hour as the battles taking place were all coinciding with each other. That feat alone I'm sure lands him as the most powerful sound user in anime, but we can go further to his combat feats, so let me explain. It's stated in the Tariko manga that Cooking Island was an 18 square kilometer island, and that including Zebra there were several fighters taking part in the battle that could have easily wiped that island off the map. This island will be comparable to the size of the state of Connecticut. Once again, as I've reiterated constant times in these videos, Tariko characters are always holding back, and restraint is actually showcased a lot in a world fueled by hunger, but now that I think about it, it kind of makes sense. Moving on, in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Zebra is still seen as the most dangerous of any of the Heavenly Kings. He overpowers everything he encounters, and this could be because he has the ability weak point voice lets him know a creature's fighting ability and current state of mind by simply determining their breathing patterns, and can even tweak frequencies to make creatures flee. Like I said earlier, Zebra enhances his physical abilities with sound, and these come in multiple forms. One comes in the form of Sound Knuckle, a projectile-like punch he can charge and hit with precision from a distance. Jet Voice, where he can enhance his own and other speed around him immensely, and also coincidentally lets him fly as if he wasn't broken enough, and if I'm correct, this was the ability he used to evacuate everyone in the stadium. And one of my personal favorite attacks of his, the Beat Punch. An attack first shown when Zebra struck one of the limbs of the four beasts of Magma Turtle, Zebra uses his opponent like an instrument, more realistically like a drum, and strikes them while also using their body to amplify the sound. Similar to the mechanics from Thunder Noise, this makes the sound reverberate in their body, amplify the entire time, decimating internal organs and the body. This attack literally destroys the same creature that tanked the conjoined firepower of humanity's greatest weapons. A barrage of attacks that was directly stated in the manga to be able to level 10 million square kilometers of land or an area 27 times larger than the island of Japan. 
Once again, put that into perspective, Zebra fucking one shot at this turtle. That means Zebra's destructive output is well over a dozen times more destructive than nuclear weapons. All of Zebra's attacks on first showing are easy building level and as I've shown skill to country, continental, and planetary as the end series, Zebra was highly boosted by the planet's full course and his own growth. But Zebra's most frightening attack is one of his true activated gourmet demon's abilities, the deaf sound or deaf voice, and it is a frequency Zebra emits that quite literally kills you. This ability is said to mimic the footsteps of the Grim Reaper. Now let's talk about how much sound is needed to kill you. You might remember in my How Powerful Is Tariko video, check that out if you have it. Sounds above 100 decimals can cause injury. And if we're talking about sounds within the human hearing frequency range, between 20 and 20,000 hertz, high intensity sounds above 150 decibels can burst your eardrums, while sounds above 185 decibels can impact your inner organs and cause death. They can do this by causing an embolism in your lungs, affecting inner organs, or even make your lungs themselves explode. However, to instantly kill a person, a sound would have to be at least as loud as 240 decibels, which is hard to come by, as the loudest and possibly strongest sound humanity has ever created would have been the atomic bomb blast of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which clocked in at 250 decibels. Zebra, obviously, can output sound much higher than this, so the deaf sound could be him frequency tweaking to literally coax your brain into death, and this ability has been shown killing dozens of the Gourmet Core Scumbies and finishing off the Red Nitro in the Gourmet Pyramid, a foe that took both Toriko and Zebra at the time to defeat. Much like Toriko, it takes Zebra massive amounts of calories to sustain himself and his attacks. In fact, on average, Zebra requires more calories and expends more calories than Toriko does. And like I stated in Toriko's video, these attacks will kill an average person from the amount of energy consumed. Whereas Toriko has autography, where his gourmet cells begin to devour each other to replenish his energy, when he's exhausted, Zebra literally just gets pissed off. Zebra's anger is so great, it literally gives him the energy to fight with substitutes of millions of calories. Additionally, it needs to be noted that Zebra's attacks are most definitely faster than the speed of sound. And even though they're sound based, it gets shown he's often reacting to high level opponents that scale to other people with light speed feats and reactions, and has attacks that because they emit light, like the laser voice, can directly be shown to be a light based attack, therefore showing his light speed capabilities. He has mastery of Enbu, the ability to control all 60 trillion cells in one's body, which he did so kind of by brute force versus how Toriko and everybody else had to learn to work together with each other, which helped their training. But anyway, he also is capable of honoring food, therefore having access to food honor, and all of this would enhance his movesets. So I will say, I was severely disappointed by Zebra Showcase and the rest of the Heavenly King Showcase when they were defeated by Joey. And it stated in the back zone they fought for close to an hour, but apparently Joey's food luck was just that great. So wrapping things up, I think one thing that makes Zebra my favorite character is his attitude. Zebra doesn't take shit from anyone, animal or man, and will openly solve any issue that is known as their life if need be. He is also quite heroic and noble at times, even though he doesn't even do it intentionally, like when he discovered 100 new gourmet ingredients and imprisoned 500 criminals shortly after his prison release, though this was a stipulation of the release, or coincidentally the fact that his mere presence caused nations to resolve conflict, resulting in towns of people actually rejoicing in the name of Zebra as he was literally their savior. Like all Toriko characters and Toriko in general, I wish this series got the respect it truly deserved, and that's why you should leave a like on this video so more people can see it and get into the fandom and pop up in the algorithm. Maybe even subscribe, you know, if you like the video and want to join the psych ward. But anyway, thanks for watching another video, everybody, and we give thanks to the bounty of the universe. With Tariko and Zebra out of the way, we're gonna keep on moving to the next Heavenly King. But before, leave a like and maybe a subscribe if you have. And even if you don't, we're glad you're here to visit the Psych War for a heaping portion of Tariko content. Without further ado, let's talk about poison and explain my choice for anime's strongest poison user. Poisons are substances that can cause harm to organisms when sufficient amounts are either absorbed, inhaled, or ingested. Known as the art of silent killing in some cultures, poison has been long since used and feared in human history. With countless rulers falling to assassinations, even in the animal kingdom there are creatures like the blue ringed octopus whose venom known as TTX only takes one milligram and can kill a person, making it one of the most known potent natural toxins. To put one milligram into perspective, it's smaller than the period at the end of a sentence. 
Knights. Relative to other Venoms by weight, TTX is 10 to 100 times more lethal as Black Widow Venom. Another poison all-star in the animal kingdom would be the most jellyfish species, as jellyfish stings use microscopic cells called nemocysts. Contact with a jellyfish tentacle can trigger millions of nemocysts to pierce the skin and inject venom all at once. Moving further, poison users and poison in general is a common ability type with an anime. Many characters have added to their moveset or adapted to their fighting style or, you know, are ninjas. Poison is ironically one of the deadliest abilities, with so much as a scratch being the reason of death. Fighting poison units often proves not a battle of skill, but luck. Before getting further, I'd like to make a specific note that a vast majority of characters use poison in anime, it's almost like a comical TV trope, but they likely aren't immune to poison and aren't producing the poison itself, which would define it as a toxin. In terms of true toxic individuals, we have very few. The best examples would be characters like Magellan, the former warden of Impo Down in One Piece, who ate the Doku Doku or Poison Poison fruit and became the Poison Man, a man capable of washing the likes of Luffy and the entire Blackbeard crew. Cobra from Fairy Tail, who through artificial means became the poison dragon slayer and can control and even eat poison similar how Natsu can eat fire. And Gordon from Black Clover, who though he looks like an animated Marilyn Manson, uses poison magic, not violent lyrics, to debilitate his opponent and aid his allies. But there exists a character that is the sum of every character in Animal Live name, and that still does not explain how toxic he is. Today, we examine anime's strongest poison user, Coco, the gentleman of the four heavens. Kings. And though his lighthearted name, similar to Zebra, Coco is classified as a class 1 dangerous creature, not because of his violent nature or crimes he's committed, but because Coco is a walking science experiment. At one point in his life, Coco was hunted relentlessly by a group of scientists who sought to use him for tests and exploit his abilities. Why? It is because Coco is, as I said, anime's strongest poison user. Coco is not only immune to, but also the host of over 500 various poisons that synthesize to his own unique brand of toxin. If he doesn't have an antidote to a foreign poison due to his extensive history of injecting and consuming poison, Coco can produce on-the-spot antibodies, his body being like a literal biochemistry lab being able to break down and manipulate various bodily elements like acids, proteins, and etc. Coco's primary method of fighting is using the poisons contained within his body to quickly incapacitate his foes. These can take forms in solids, liquids, and gases, and he can control the lethality as well, being able to produce anything from mild stimulants to highly addictive drugs to 100% certain death in the form of flesh-eating or melting poison. And on the note of his flesh, Coco, when engaged in battle, almost like an animal's defense mechanism, turns the sickly purple, a color once often commonly associated with poison and death. When coated in his poison, Coco is no less than physically untouchable by any being not bearing a massive resistance to poison. This causes a great deal of creatures and opponents to instantly be shit out of luck against Coco. Even if you could attack him, the poison itself would eat you alive before you could hurt him. His poison is so potent that one shot paralyzed the regal mammoth, a literal island-sized creature coming in at 1.5 kilometers long, and ironically, Coco doesn't simply use his poison only as a deterrent. As a member of the Four Kings, Coco is gifted with extraordinary vision. And when I say extraordinary, I mean that Coco basically has perfect vision, something beyond 2020, more like 20,000-20,000. Coco's eyes, due to their advanced nature, is capable of seeing far more of the electromagnetic spectrum than a normal human. And let me explain. Humans can only detect about 1% of EM waves. We simply can only see a small percentage of the EM spectrum, of which visible light forms part. We cannot see infrared, microwave, UHF, VHF, shortwave, medium wave, long wave, ultraviolet, gamma, etc. Meaning, Coco, on the other hand, basically has night vision, thermal vision, and x-ray vision, and can even see within a person's body and determine their anatomy shown in his fight with Grimpotch, who had a body built like a natural detox facility. By reading the waves of the electromagnetic spectrum, Coco is even capable of predicting his opponent's next move, the future, or even see the omen of death on them, these coming with a near 100% accuracy. This is why in combat, Coco is also an expert marksman. His attacks range and vary from short distance to long distance attacks like poison dressing, a barrage style mist, of poison droplets, later poison machine gun, or poison rifle or poison cannon, concentrated blast of his toxin. Poison Rifle specifically contracts his poison ducts, causing the poison to spiral when fired and increases the accuracy and can change the trajectory. 
This extends to a plethora of other toxins and poisons, along with weapons. As well, his poison isn't limited to offense. Along with being toxic to the touch, Coco can excrete and harden his poison to create a shield-like membrane over himself and later full suits armor. The armor being able to withstand acid, fire, blunt force, high-yield explosions, and Coco can even form the poison mixed with platelets in his blood and create weapons harder than steel like swords, spears, bows, and even boomerangs that he can use to further spread poison. If confronted with an enemy resistant or even immune to his venom, like the giant GT robot that was capable of swimming through the toxic sea known as Poison Tide, Coco is perfectly capable of leading his opponent into psychological traps, firing a gas like poison that hardened around the robot's core, then luring the robot into a rut in the ground where more gas could collect so he could activate and concentrate a particular type of poison in the form of the volcanic gas Aqua Regia, and baiting the robot into triggering an explosion that allowed Coco to further shut down the said to be poison immune machine. By mixing nitric acid and hydrochloric acid within his body, Coco creates one of the deadliest substances known to man. Aqua Regia, being capable of melting precious minerals like gold or platinum, etc. This is actually an excellent nod to Aqua Regia's use in real life, as it was once used when Germany invaded Denmark in World War II. Hungarian scientist George de Pahesi dissolved the Golden Nobel Prizes of two German physicists in Aqua Regia to prevent the Nazis from confiscating them. Going further, during the Four of Beasts arc, Coco reveals a suite of new abilities, first being virus manipulation. By adapting his cells, Coco can create a poison that is basically like him. Poison virus will infiltrate a target and change and adapt itself until it can identify the proper way to destroy the enemy's body. This virus is a perfect counter for other poison users as the more resistances they have, the deadlier poison virus will become. During this same battle with Invite Death, Coco revealed mold manipulation, being able to create the Mold Spear, a weapon with a discharge speed of a Mold Spore, which he states is several times near the speed of light, and is said to be the fastest living, or not living, organic thing on the planet. And also at this point, Coco could use poison so dangerous and create armor so sturdy that Invite Death stood no chance against him. Invite Death, which was a massive monster whose power was capable of easily nuking kilometers of territory and that scales similarly to Tariko's fight with Gal and Zebra's fight with the Magma Turtle, this putting Coco's durability and damage output by comparison continental to small country level. One of the more unique poison abilities Coco has is Poison Doll, where he can produce clones of people or objects that near perfectly resemble and can replicate the original's actions and personality, and can do this with an incredibly short amount of time. Not only shown in his battle with the Four Beasts, but the best showcase was that if not for Coco, all of the Heavenly Kings except Sunny would have died in their first round of games with the Monkey King. Coco was able to replace Jericho, Zebra, and himself with clones before sustaining any life-threatening attacks. The Monkey King arm wrestled Tariko, played Rochambeau with Zebra, blew Coco's knees out, thought Sunny was playing hide-and-seek, and finally sneezed, destroying the surrounding landscape, then left. Bambina did all these actions in under 1 second, 0.1 seconds approximately in the time it took Sunny to blink, and thanks to Coco, the series didn't change his name from Tariko to Sunny. Once in the gourmet world, like all Tariko characters, Coco receives massive power-ups, and at this stage in the story could produce massive amounts of poison due to food, honor, and mastering food immersion. He receives an oxygen-based healing factor from eating air, access to the back channel from another, and pair, meaning he can surpass the speed of light. By this point, Coco is like all the other Heavenly Kings, having entered large continental to planetary level. As they've all awakened their appetite demons and Coco is outright stated to be able to subjugate an entire planet with his devil poison. I would like to propose that for Coco, his strength does not lie in his power-ups. Pre-Gourmet World, Coco is already the strongest poison user in anime, though I'm sure someone can find some obscure Dragon Ball Z character that happened to use poison and then got fodderized. With so many various methods and types of poison, I'll still confidently say what makes Coco truly dangerous is not the fact that he is toxic or even his gourmet cells, it's the combo of his spectacular vision and his brilliant mind. Coco has a brain like a supercomputer, along with fortune telling prowess allows him to absolutely bankrupt casinos, a 1 million real slot machine that no natural human could ever perfectly spin outside of the world's best RNG. 
Coco would see it practically standing still. This 100-sided slot vertical horizontal machine had 60 different symbols that rotated at a speed of 100 to 150 meters per second. With the further right one goes, the jackpot symbol becomes scarcer and the machine's speed maxing up as you would progress. To Komatsu, a normal human, he wasn't even able to see the pictures at all and Coco once again saw it standing still. This prowess extends to reading the probability in card games and detecting cheating methods as well. The secret behind his fortune telling is, as I said earlier, his eyes. Through reading the EM spectrum, Coco can detect when someone is lying and read their emotions, minute body movements, and process all of this to produce mathematically certain odds for himself. Unlike Tariko or Zebra, who realistically are specialized tanks, and Sunny, who has an entirely unique ability in his hair manipulation, Coco is the most strategic of the four kings, the gentleman. Now, if you think that there is somebody in anime potentially stronger than him as a poison user, or even just stronger than him, go ahead and leave that down below in the comments. Thanks for tuning into another video, everybody, and I'll catch you on the next episode of Tariko Unveil. Welcome back, everybody, new and old. For more Tariko Unveiled, despite a beef break, today we're back and we're gonna finally talk about anime's strongest hair user. Now, hair is weird. As humans, hair is actually considered an organ, that's just a derivative of the skin, the body's largest organ. Hair is incredibly useful to humans. It extends our sense of touch, helps regulate body temperature, protects our bodies from external damage, and overall helps us to identify other humans. One common misconception about hair is that it is weak. But on the contrary, similar to substances like spider silk, human hair is actually quite durable. The average human has 100 to 150,000 strands of hair. Each human hair can hold up to 100 grams or 3 ounces of weight. The combined weight of a full head of hair could support a weight of 12 tons, meaning it can hold the weight of two elephants. Within hair, we find that it is not as strong as steel. Hair, though, when combined and made denser, is more like aluminum or some sort of composite reinforced material like Kevlar, showing that Mother Nature started making composite materials long before man. So all that being said, what would happen if we saw hair used in combat or as a superpower? In the Marvelous world of anime, we have just that. There's actually quite a lot of hair users, so I just decided to list off a quick few. There's Naruto's mentor, aka Pervy Sage Jiraiya, from Naruto who uses his hair as shields and sometimes even projectiles like quills. We have Yukiko from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and her stand, Love Deluxe, which used her hair to bind people and can seemingly endlessly grow without fear of damage. Then there's Flare Corona from Fairy Tail that can utilize her hair to create near impenetrable armor, grab people, impale people, fire bullets, or even use it to set things on fire. Kuma Dori from One Piece, who, while not as versatile as some of the people we've listed off, uses his hair to strangle people. And of course, I can't forget anime's most iconic hair user. So, with these examples given, today I'm going to introduce anime's strongest hair user. Not counting. Today, let's talk about one of the most vain yet noble characters ever made. The beauty of the four heavenly kings, Sunny. Sunny is a member of the renowned four heavenly kings, four genetically enhanced orphans adopted by President Achiryu. Sunny being the only one with an actual sibling, that being Rin, whom Sunny had a typical brother-sister relationship with as the two constantly bicker and pick at each other. Sunny, like his siblings, is a renowned gourmet hunter and one of the strongest beings on the planet. The most unique of the four kings in my opinion, Sunny is not driven by hunger like Tariko, reason like Coco, nor anger like Zebra. Sunny's unique disposition amongst the kings is that he's literally the beauty queen. Sunny is someone who from the way he walks, to how he talks, expresses himself and views the world is shaped by his perception of beauty. To the extent that his full course reflects his ideals of beauty as it literally fuels Sunny's beautiful lifestyle. Though originally shown as rude and abrasive in pursuit of said lifestyle, we see Sunny has an appreciation for the beauty and order of life and nature. Sunny could be considered not a food connoisseur per se, but more so someone focused with and obsessed with aesthetic. When Tariko had decided the jewel meat should go on his full course, Sunny literally strong armed it away from him on the basis because he shined harder than Tariko, so his gourmet cells were more compatible. Once again, always chasing aesthetics. 
when showing blatant disrespect for not only the nature of food, but this very beauty that I've spoken of, Sonny, who usually stays out of any affairs, takes on a trait he views as ugly, anger. In combat, Sonny is the heavenly king gifted with an extraordinary sense of touch. Sonny's hair, as a hair user, is likely one of the most versatile examples of hair users in anime. Well, except Sonny's hair has what's been called feelers on them. Think of these the same way as our own body's hair extends our sense of touch, but on superpowered steroids. His hair basically functions as additional limbs able to fully replace the functions of his body. And Sonny uses his hair not only in combat, but as a means of movement, protection, and general use. Each one of his hair colors has a different functional purpose. His blue hair has cold points that gauge cold temperatures. His pink hair has hot points for measuring hot temperatures. His green hair has pressure points that sense pressures like pulling or pushing in any direction. And his white hair are pain detectors, similar to nerve endings in the body. We see Sonny can essentially levitate using the feelers as suspensions, which are delicate enough to not break the surface tension on water, allowing him to glide across otherwise uncrossable surfaces like real life water spiders or that one lizard. At 0.1 microns thick, they are invisible to the naked eye. A micron is a unit of length equal to one millionth of a meter, a micrometer. In other words, generally speaking, the human eye can see debris and dust that are approximately 25 microns in size. On his first showing, we get to see that Sonny's hair has a max weight of 550 pounds per strand. It's revealed he used 200,000 strands for the baby mammoth, meaning per strand at 550 pounds was the yield. Multiplying the number of hairs and their max strength, we get 110 million pounds. So that means a baby regal mammoth weighs right around 500,000 metric tons. Now, for scale, perhaps the most popular commercial aircraft flown around the world is the Boeing 737. If you're a frequent traveler, chances are you've flown on one of these planes before. The Boeing 737-800 aircraft is one of the larger models of the 737, and they can hold 189 passengers. The maximum certified takeoff weight, meaning the fully loaded passenger luggage, weight, etc. for the aircraft is 79,015 kilograms, which equals out to 174,198 pounds. If you could place 12 Boeing 737-800 airplanes together and weigh them, they would be close to equaling 1,000 tons. So multiply that by five, and Sonny was carrying an alleged weight of 60 fully loaded airplanes. Sonny himself states that the adult mammal that scales in at 10 times the size of the baby at 50K is simply too much for him to even hold. This meaning 200,000 hairs had to have been a significant portion of Sonny's strength, even though it looked rather easy for him. Aside from simple movements and actions, Sonny has a large arsenal of attacks, all utilizing his hair. And as far as I can tell, we have never seen Sonny lay a finger on a person in battle. Well, he did punch one of the eight kings near the end of the series, but we'll get to that. Sonny's unique ability is the dining kitchen, the approximate space in which his feelers can stretch outward. At the time of the Regal Mammoth arc, it was 25 meters or roughly 85 feet in radius. In this space, Sonny has control through his feelers of anything in the vicinity not strong enough to resist him or detect him because Terry was able to sense his feelers in to a safe distance. This is a space Toriko claims Sonny has never lost inside of. And with the fact he can lock down your movement by using hair lock, where he invades your body with his feelers and takes control of your muscles and joints, it's not hard to imagine. If someone manages to get an attack off against Sonny, it's very likely it won't either land or Sonny will throw it back at you. With the technique known as spatula, Sonny can reflect virtually any attack, reverting the force of attacks and blows and redirecting them with amplified power, this later getting upgraded to super spatula, and often scales to either 100 to 1000 times stronger than the initial output of the original attack. Along with spatula, Sonny can use his hair so precisely he can fix internal organs using hair operation, where he uses microscopic feelers to conduct on-hand medical care, surgery, or first aid. In the Regal Mammoth arc, we can scale Sonny around large building to if not small city or higher, given his journey to the Regal Mammoth Plateau and the fact that he will stand of the weight of the Regal Mammoth when it ran off the Regal Plateau and could have killed him, Tariko, and the entire gang. Going further, Sonny and Tariko held back the bite force of the Regal Mammoth as they got stranded on the tooth of it before they made it inside of its body. For those of you that might think it's just a giant elephant, 
Elephants might surprise you with one of the highest bite forces on the planet at 2,175 pounds per square inch. Their bites are half the strength of a great white shark and three times that of a lion. Now imagine the massive scale of the several million ton mammoth's bite force. Sunny you spatula, and even if for just a brief moment, completely stopped the two from crushing them and allowed them to all get inside of its body. When Sunny fought the branch head that piloted the blue GT robot, we see Sunny can deflect laser fire, and even possess and lock down the titanium alloy body of a GT robot. Sunny tries to end this fight early on with the 20,000 hair strand punch, which reveals one of his weaknesses. Sunny can't use all of his hair at any given moment. The more hair he uses, the shorter the range of his attacks, though this changes as he gets stronger in the series. So in battle, Sunny only uses his full hair control when he knows he can deliver certain defeat. In this battle with the GT robot, he's shown, as I said, deflecting dozens of high power lasers using hair leash, which lets him part the trajectory of attacks, though of course, this takes calories and has a limit. This is why when the GT robot sick the mega octopus on Sunny, rather than exhaust himself and exceed his maximum numbers of feelers used, which was 50,000, Sunny simply quits. We find out Sunny is not the type to engage in a battle of wits, nor is he one to battle to the bitter end to avoid defeat. Sunny believes in absolute resolution, a clear, decisive, beautiful win. As he gets just that, showing incredibly impressive durability, because remember, this GT robot was the original master of the Opsaurus, and when Tariko had beaten it, it was capable of leveling the walkway pillars of the Devil's Playground. So this robot, by comparison, was hitting hard enough to shatter buildings by having owned the Opsaurus. Sunny tanks all of these attacks, and as he wanted to, beautifully dispatched the robot by provoking him into getting in close and using his fillers to infiltrate his body after a direct hit from Hair Punch, and led to a stranglehold of its core as it ran away. After the Regal Mammoth arc, Sunny is next seen in the country of life, like comically, furthering his need to take care of his appearance. But we find out Sunny is pursuing a god ingredient. Knowing that what he sought was in the gourmet world, Sonny fails miserably, as Tariko did eventually as well. Sonny finds himself under the eventual tutelage of the gourmet gang leader Gourmand, who taught Sonny the next ability I'll talk about, intuition. Now, think of intuition as the technique to access flow state. Think of flow state as the utmost peak of not only performance, but necessarily being one with the task at hand completely and unavoidably getting rid of all other thoughts and focusing on directly what's in front of you, allowing its user to be completely in the now. This lets them determine the best method of attack and location on a target as if though they fought it before. Intuition allows the user to target vitals and weak spots of virtually any type of creature or organisms that they've never encountered, all based on their gut instinct. This powers up Sunny so much, we get our next monumental feat in the Shining Garami art. We already find out that like Tariko and Coco, Sonny has befriended a literal baby god in Quinn, a baby mother snake. How he managed to do so is never revealed similar to Coco's meeting kiss. Moving forward, using Quinn as transportation, we see Sonny and Tariko can remain upright and unmoving even when Quinn moves at speeds of 400 kilometers per hour or 248 miles per hour. And for you Americans, that's like basically traversing the distance of several football fields a second. Here, the group finds themselves traveling to Ors Mountain and Death Falls, one of the most dangerous environments in the human world that rivals even the gourmet world. Upon arrival, it's revealed Sonny has become substantially more powerful, even being able to control his hair while using complex body movements like swimming, something he could not do before. Once arriving, we see the water of Death Falls is pretty much compared to a nuclear bomb versus it being just a waterfall. The waters of Death Falls are stated to have a downpour force of 1 trillion liters per minute. Keep in mind that the water of Niagara Falls in real life have a downpour force of around 44 million gallons per minute. So for scale, the waters of Niagara Falls in terms of lethality. The water falls at 32 feet per second over the falls, hitting the base of the falls with anywhere from 280 tons of force to 2,509 tons of force at the Horseshoe Falls in Canada. So basically, standing under Niagara Falls would be like getting hit by six fully loaded semi-trucks per second. Sunny reflected or parted the water of Death Falls. Death Falls water force is so dangerous it can drown and devour regal mammoth-sized beasts. We're talking creatures the size of Godzilla or King Ghidorah. Sunny's hair, however, is revealed, like I said, to have parted the water in front of them. As water does not have a solid form, he can easily distribute the force of hundreds of millions of tons of water pressure, as it's stated. 
Here he reveals his new hair weight limit of 300 kilos and states every strand can resist 1,000 times their total limit. Its limit totaling Sonny's max weight at around 90 million tons before snapping. Keep in mind, this wasn't enough to part the water-style nuke of Death Falls, and only by reflecting Tariko's Kuji punch could Sunny shatter the massive mountain that was about to fall on them. But respectfully, we can place Sunny around Small Island at country level here as being able to redirect the force of Death Falls would be the equivalent to trying to deflect a nuclear bomb. And this makes sense, as after the Shining Rami arc, the four kings go directly to battling the four beasts, who all scale to at least large island or continental, and this is also supported by the fact that Granny Setsu could have easily breached the waters of Death Fall, and she was one of the people fighting in the Gourmet Festival arc that could have destroyed the Connecticut-sized island that they were on. In his battle with the Octocon, or whatever it's called, Sonny showed complete and utter domination with his hair marionette, being able to fully invade this continental level beast body and control it, before rebounding his own spatula over and over again before firing it back on the Octocon, a creature that by comparison to the other four beasts can withstand damage equivalent to 20 times the land mass of Japan being destroyed. After the four beast arc, oh boy, we get to go back to the Gourmet Core invasion. In the cooking festival arc in his battle with Tamirod, Sunny is able to dispatch several dozen of Tamirod's high capture level insects, and has even formed countermeasures to foes that try to disable his sensors, like creating literal tornadoes with the force and control of his hair large enough to stand above the massive cooking coliseum which once again held skyscrapers. In this same battle, we see Sunny take the worst beating of the series. Tamirod, who by the way has his own separate video on anime strongest insect user, check that out if you haven't shows to be one of the first opponents that actually causes Sonny to lose his hair, and not out of frustration. As you can imagine, for someone like Sonny with these incredibly detailed feelers, has his hair cut, it goes beyond excruciating. For Sonny, losing a strand of hair feels like having a tooth ripped out without any anesthesia. A normal human would die from the shock of having all their teeth suddenly removed. For Sonny, this was like losing hundreds to thousands at once. In this same battle, Sonny finally lets the cork off the jar and releases his gourmet demon, Satan Hair. It is one of Tariko's more casually broken abilities, and I'll get into deep detail on that later in the video. The Hair Demon is, in my opinion, a parasitic type demon versus being a warrior type like Don Slime or the Ogres, or, you know, some of the ones that might use mind control or chemical dependency like Coco's Poison Devil. The hair demon is said to, with a only single strand, burrow its way through the crust, mantle, and core of a planet and drain it of its mass, essentially devouring the planet. But we'll move on for now. By manifesting his appetite energy in his hair, Sonny gains partial control of the demon's ability. His attacks become so deadly that they take out the same insects capable of cutting his near indestructible hair, but also take out Tommy Rod's arm. And Tommy Rod is shown to easily tank and negate an attacks from Tariko when he was respectively mountain class at the lowest. We find out though Sonny Satan hair is incredibly powerful, he barely has control of it, this essentially only being a last resort to quickly end the battle. This, however, not being the case, as Sonny went against his nature of decisive victory and fought Tommy Rod on equal grounds, no tricks, just an outright battle of might that, in the end, was quite beautiful anyway. Moving on, we're gonna get to the final parts of the video. If you're still watching this far, guys, thank you. Leave a like just to try and help boost us in the algorithm to get more people to see this because now we're entering the gourmet world, or gourmet world, however you want me to say it. Sunny and the other kings head into the gourmet world, and as per usual in the gourmet world, it's on a whole nother planet of capability. We find out Sunny's dining kitchen range has expanded to 700 meters, and Sunny can even compensate for lack of range by scattering his hairs and controlling the remotely. In the air arc, we see Sunny can use his hair to search an entire area when they were searching for Gigi. In the gourmet world, he along with the other kings were capable of deflecting a powerful wave from a literal living sea. Later, after getting paired up with a kappa named Nose from Bizarre Food Village, Sonny is shown once again deflecting lasers, this time in the form of laser rain, which is far more powerful and dangerous than any he's deflected before. And if anything, clocking at light speed as Nosh reflected him with his hardened scalp, which was more like a mirror, thus making me believe that they were not heat-based, but light-based. We go on to find out in this arc how useful Sonny's remote hairs truly are. 
Sunny is able to bind the entire 15 meter long air fruit, which puts the air fruit right under a mile in size. He does this by scattering his remote hairs around and joining them together to compensate for his lack of distance, meaning outside of Sunny's 700 meteor radius, he can expand this by over double. To contain air in the pressure of the ripening fruit, Sunny contained, as stated, 5 quadrillion tons of air with a volume of 25 million kilometers, or approximately 16 billion miles. For perspective, the farthest reaching planet from our own is Neptune at 3.5 billion or 4.5 billion kilometers. And Sunny, along with zebra corking the air fruit contain this type of unfathomable amount of air pressure all within the hair net. Once having consumed air, according to Coco, increases the efficiency of every bodily function by at least twofold, and it also grants any person that ate it extremely fast breathing based healing factors and the ability to spend days in an oxygenless environment. Meaning, once again, Sunny gets a massive power up. Later in this arc, we can clock Sunny's speed as either faster than light, FTL, or close to it, as he matches Brunch the Tengu's speed, whom I stated in the How to Kill an Immortal video, moves while not light speed, close to it. And once again, most if not all of Team Tariko that went into the gourmet world would have surpassed the speed cap of faster than light to simply exist. Sunny attained this speed by throwing his remote hairs ahead of him and sort of stringing from one to another like a kinetic chain. This making up for Sunny's obvious lack of mobility. Similar to in the festival arc with tornadoes, Sunny can form even more complex hair structures and support style techniques. Like the hair tornado has extended to hair wing, where he can form literal angel wings of hair and blow away airborne toxins in any given area. Moving forward, we're gonna go into the pear arc. In the pear arc, when they initially battle the Monkey King, Sunny creates a dome out of the hair that can contain the force of the Four Kings and Monkey King's Battle of Games. But before this bout of games, we see Sunny and the other kings battle one of the continent's Imbu Masters. This beast fired a beam of Abatite energy that destroyed the entire area around them, and the pair continent is already home to massive areas boasting the largest size in the gourmet world. This blast literally decimated the surrounding area, and that was the power of the blast Sunny didn't eat. With the same arm composed of his Satan hair, Sunny states that his arm can eat anything and even send it back. He then unleashes the energy his arm consumed back at the gorilla that fired it. So at this point, getting back to how I mentioned Sunny's appetite demon, the hair demon, Satan, Satan hair, we're just gonna call it Satan hair. Satan hair is visually what you get if you Google Super Saiyan 10,000 back in the early days of the internet. But for Sunny, Satan hair is a literal deal with the devil. Sunny's appetite demon is no less than an endless hunger with a picky appetite. GG states Sunny's demon would take root of planets and devour them. This demon coinciding with its abilities are what Sunny calls his ugly side. Within the power of Satan here lies an uncontrollable hunger, first shown in his battle with Tanurai. But remember, Satan Hair has plenty of other feats that don't stop there. We can go on to determine Satan Hair is capable of truly devouring anything. He can take in Coco's poison without issue, and Coco's poison is potent enough to dope a planet if you remember. Sunny can store objects as well as preserve their current state, shown when he keeps Tariko's arm his Satan hair for several days, and I'm just assuming the entire body and mind of Tommy Rod having to have devoured him during their battle, which means he can store and preserve energy and matter in their current states with no decay or breakdown. As shown in the battle with the remaining chefs of the Gourmet Corps, Sunny spits out Tommy Rod, who was fully coherent and seemingly unfazed despite Satan Hair having consumed him two years ago. Maybe that's the scary part about Satan Hair. It's odd to think that Sunny's hair demon would have potentially millions of different preserved memories of organisms or planets it's devoured all blending together under a weird hive mind that will eventually destroy us all. Sunny might be the most versatile of the four heavenly kings. Able to fit into any given role in battle, Sunny proves he will get his hands dirty when needed. In conclusion, Sunny showed us that self-care, a healthy diet, and good hygiene routine truly make you excel and go beyond simple beauty. But referring back to Tariko, we simply give humble thanks for the vast bounty of knowledge that Tariko verse provides. Oh no you don't! Mine, so get over it. Why are you making it your main dish? Because it makes me much more sparkly than it does you. How does that matter?